So it seems like everybody up here has a nickname. So Dr. Stedman, everybody's been calling him Steady, and everybody calls you Topper, which I love. That's amazing. You have to tell me that story, how that happened maybe after the interview. This, this will take a little while, Natalie, so <laughs> give me a little time on that one. Let's, let's get into the interview, please. Okay, fair enough. But you and Dr. Stedman have a very long history, and you've been friends a long time. Can you talk a little bit about how you met? Sure. Actually, I was at the United States Olympic Training Center back in 1977. When I arrived, it's very interesting, the sports medicine director at the time said, listen, Topper, there's a doctor over in South Lake Tahoe that comes over and visits the athletes. This is the summer of 1977. He said, you've got to meet this doctor. His name is Dr. Stebman. And this sports medicine director at the time said, he's one of the most unique doctors he has ever seen. From the standpoint of not only the profession and knowing what he's doing, but he connects with people like he's never seen before. And so the first time I met Dr. Stebman, instantaneously, I said, he's special. Wow. And that ended up growing into a working relationship, correct? It surely did. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be at the Olympic Training Center, part of the sports medicine staff for, the, for that of the U.S. ski team. One thing led to another. Uh, met my partner, John Atkins, in 1978, summer of 78. That's another story. I love it. <laughs> it's a great story. We won't. We don't have time. And that led to... Uh, the fact that 1982, and looking at moving to uh, really to Colorado Springs Training Center, from there, 1984, John Atkins asked me to become men's trainer for the U.S. Ski Team, and I was privileged, and and uh, and it was great. And so I look at that, and again, I'm getting my dates. Excuse me, 1982, he asked me through 1984, this area of Olympics. Pardon me. We won't have a test after this, so don't worry. No pop quizzes, I promise. I, I'm just using my white hair as an excuse, so excuse my dates here. I get a little mixed up. But it sounds like you've seen so much over your career and over the time that you've worked with Dr. Stedman. What are, what are some thoughts that you have on his legacy? Well, I, I think one of the things that uh, at the time when we started, very interesting enough, the term sports medicine came about. Mm -hmm. And everyone wanted to use it because it was kind of a catch-all term. Mm -hmm. And truly, I look at one of the first pioneers in sports medicine as Dr. Stebman, and I truly mean that. Not only with athletes, mm -hmm. but just with the regular person. The individuals that came to see him, mm -hmm. and he had that, that, that knack, and he was always special that way because he could interact so well. And not only that, he had a vision, and he was, he was, he was a, a, a physician that always looked ahead, what, what can be better? What can be changed to make it better? And he is a truly pioneer in sports medicine. Well, it sounds as though you are both kindred spirits, and thank you so much for taking a few minutes can to I talk about it. Can I say one more thing? Absolutely. I want to say thank you very much to the Stedman family. They've been just uh, heartfelt for my partner, J.A. and I, and they mean a great deal to us. And Steady, God bless you, my friend. We love you. Thank you.